What's up guys, it's Mike. It's Dan. Welcome to Beyond Science 2. Yes. Today we're going to talk about this mystic flower. Yes. That I feel like does not get enough attention. This definitely doesn't get enough attention because this is crazy. Yeah. So This is crazy. Um, there is a, every, there's legends and myths in every single yeah. culture. Yeah. And there is a uh, Buddhist legend that says there is a mystic flower mm -hmm. that blooms every 3,000 years. Yes. And every 3,000 years, the booming of the flower will symbolize a savior who's coming to the world. That's right. So the last time it bloomed on earth mm -hmm. was before uh, uh, Shakyamuni, right? Before Buddha was born. Right. The Indian prince. Yes. Who started Buddhism. Uh, Shakyamuni was born and the flower was said to have bloomed during that time. So right. fast forward some 3,000 years later, we're now in 2016 and the Udambara flower it is what it's called. It's been blooming for years now. For 20, all, all, over 20 years. So it was first sighted right. in 1997 in a Buddhist temple. On a Buddhist statue. On a Buddhist statue. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did two videos about this in okay. Beyond Science. I feel like every time I, I did this, I don't feel like a lot of people watched it. Okay. Because, but I'm, I'm like, I want to talk about it more because this is amazing. Yeah. This is like, I mean, I don't care what you believe in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still got to admit this is amazing. Yeah. First of all, when do you, when do you ever hear about a flower that booms every 3000 years? Right. You hear I mean, about a flower, yeah, it booms like every year, once a year. I even heard about some flowers that yeah, boom, boom, booms every like seven years. Right. 3000 right. years. Because we're not talking about some things that are like, oh, if the conditions are right, you know, you hear about that. Yeah. Th no, this, this is, is completely <laughs> unexplainable. And you guys, you guys, this, you don't understand that it's not like the seeds are somewhere, right? Right. There are no seeds. It, it literally like, it could, first of all, blooming, it's literally blooming on objects. Yeah. It's not like... Oh, soil right. somewhere no. is mixed with some lilies and, and daffodils or whatever. Right. No, it's literally growing up on a metal pipe. On a metal pipe, uh, on a golden statue that's completely like polished and smooth. I mean, people found it everywhere. Let me just kill a uh, kill a a uh, a what do you call that? A debunked theory. Yeah, I'm gonna debunk a debunk. You're gonna debunk a debunk. Okay. Right. So you know, this is why this is why I hate. Well, I hate it. Love hate. Okay. When I do when I do Beyond Science, is yeah. that <laughs> there are a lot of people, right? They live to debunk. Yes, and I agree. if you read some of their some of their theories, yeah. it doesn't make much sense. But no. they love to do it because I think that's one of the things. It's like something comes out, right? Yeah. Because we live in an age where everybody loves to call everything a hoax. Yeah. And look. With good reason, a lot of things are a hoax. True. But a lot of legit things out there, everyone's like, as soon as it comes out, they don't even care. No. They don't even know. That's right away, they're like, that's a hoax. That's a hoax. That's a hoax. How do you know? Yeah. Okay, they're, they're like, well, uh, well, okay, in this case, they're saying the Udam Babara flowers mm -hmm. are actually lace uh, insect L eggs yeah. from what was, what was called lace wing, green lace wing. Yes. Okay, yes. Take a look at yeah. some of these photos. Yeah. Does that look like an egg to you? We're gonna give you a side-to-side -side comparison between what a lace right. wing egg looks like right. under the microscope and what a udambara flower looks like under the microscope. Also, the eggs, those are real things, right? But they die after the eggs hatch. Yes. These flowers, they're, they're the most resilient flowers. They will literally stay for a long, long, long time. And even in cases where people said they were like crushed or trampled yeah. or whatever, they grow right back. Guys, I, I've legit, I've seen these flowers in real life. My friends have shown me these flowers. Yeah. One of them, he, he, you know what this guy does? He keeps it. He found he found something growing out of a leaf. Okay. And he kept it on his yeah. desk inside a container. Wow. And it was there for a year. No way. And it's probably there right now. I don't know. Last time I saw it, it still looks good. No. Another friend of mine has it growing on her. Uh, what is it? A lot, like a piece of wood. Okay, yeah. And yeah, some yeah. other friend of mine had it growing on her fridge. Yeah, and these are like these are th these flowers. They're not like a big flower. They're actually almost microscopic. Yeah, they're very they're, tiny little. They look like needles, almost like little yeah. pins. You you can't even like you won't even be able to see it from like let's say more than like a foot away. Yeah. But when you do, you're you're definitely like yo, that's not normal. It's not that's a. It's not a hair. We're gonna give you guys all the. Uh, yeah. You guys can take a look all for yourself, but. No, the, the, the scripture that they, yeah. that they said this from is this. So this is the okay. scripture. Volume 8 of the Buddhist scripture, mm -hmm. uh, Hui Lin, Phonetics and Interpretation. That's okay. the scripture. So this is an actual thing where I'm reading to you guys. Right. It says, The Ondambara flower is the product of propitious 
and supernatural phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It is a celestial flower and does not exist in the mundane world. Right. If a Tathagata or the king of the golden wheel appears in the human world, mm -hmm. this flower will appear due to his great virtue and blessing. This right. is an actual, uh, this is from an actual Buddhist scripture. Right. In from Sanskrit. a long time ago. I think Sanskrit. It's in yeah. Sanskrit, yeah. Ancient Indian language. Yeah. So 3,000 years ago, this appeared when Sakamuni appeared. It's 3,000 years later, right. it has appeared again. Right. Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, well, who came? Right. Who's here now? Right. So, well, I mean, that's up to a lot of people's that's interpretation. Right. Exactly. But, I mean, someone must be here. Right. And Tathagata is a rank of Buddha. Basically, yeah. if you guys know stuff about Buddhism or you studied it or whatever, um, so it if you, like you said, if you if you have a very closed mind and you're one of those people that just live to debunk, of course you're you're gonna hear things like, oh, it's not of this world, therefore it's fake. So basically, you, most people out there, I think, do believe that there are you know vast dimensions and worlds beyond this world. Dude, you know what I mean? This is this is what, what what I'm saying when I talk about aliens, right? Yeah. So whenever you say you believe in aliens, right away your friends, a lot of your friends, right. your family be like, you're a tin tin hat wearer. Okay. <sighs> the smartest minds in the world yeah. have said there must be aliens. 100% NASA said it. Everybody said it. But most of my friends, I feel like, are really right. open-minded. That's why you right. know we're interested in this kind of stuff. And right. I feel like you know I get to connect with a lot of uh, the audience out there who right. who who are as open-minded as you know as our group of people. Right. Um, and they're really good about it. But there's still a lot of people who are like, eh, eh. But you know, what do you believe then? Right. Uh, People told you they're aliens. There's sightings all over the place. Right. Uh, Scientists. Scientists have told you they are. Right. Same thing with this, right? Yeah. The brightest minds in the world have told you other dimensions must exist. Yeah, dimensions. dimensions. Dimensions must exist. Yeah. So you're like, well, yeah. Well, look, there's so many things that we cannot see with right. the physical eye that right. doesn't mean they don't exist. Can right. you see radio waves? Right. Can you see that? Right. I mean, there's so many things like, oh, I don't believe in, okay, you don't believe in ghosts. All right, whatever, you know what? Right. You can believe whatever you want to believe, but I'm just saying to you guys, a lot of this stuff, although it sounds kind of out there, doesn't mean it's not true. Exactly. That's why I like the Vulcan logic. Okay, which is, it, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, I I'm can't not gonna quote it, I can't quote it. Whoa, let me, let me find this Vulcan logic it, for it you should, guys. We should remember this one, because this is a good one. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. All uh, right, Spock, let's hear it. When you eliminate the impossible, right. whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Yo, I, when, I, when I heard that in the movie, yeah. I was like, yo, that dude, I think it's Spock's father, or Spock said it. No, he like, said he it. He said it, right? No, Spock said it. Spock said it. I'm like, whoa. Because they were like, how do you beam on the Enterprise? They're right. like, well, this is how I did it. Because oh, they're talking about time travel. Yeah. You know, time travel, and people, of course, people now are like, Shh, time travel. Oh, it's a real thing, I'm sure. Yeah, so yeah. we wanted to bring this story up once again because it's such an interesting story. Right. Every 3,000 years, guys, so, I mean, regardless of where your, whatever your belief systems are, right. um, I mean, look, this time period period is special because I think this is the, the epicenter of all these uh, prophecies. Yeah. 2002, yeah. well, nothing happened, but still. Right. 2002, around this time, end of the world, so, right. uh, Y2K, all this stuff, all yeah. the end of the world, all the saviors coming. It's, it's kind of centered around this time period. So if you think about it, Maybe it is true. Maybe there is somebody here right. that is that maybe is, I don't know that coming to bring to salvation help to people. Us or, yeah. Because God knows we need it. This world yeah. every single day, every every time oh. you look turn on the news, it's just like this guy. You know, Brock Turner, what? six three months for rape. Yeah, uh, terrorists, the Middle East, shootings, just like, everything, just going, bombings. Yeah, crazy so, plagues, insane. I, I mean, even yeah. if you. I'm hoping for something because right. this is definitely not the not the world you want to raise your kids in. Yeah, so let us know what you guys think of this story. Again, I did this a couple more times on Beyond Science. If you want to go watch that, yeah. go watch the, uh, the main channel. But uh, let us know your thoughts on this mystic flower. Yeah. Thank and you they all. can Google it. Yeah, Google, Google it. it. Google it for yourself. Yeah. Make sure you, you find a difference between this and this stupid egg thing. Yo, you know what the naysayers would say? Right. Google's, a, Google's a hoax. <laughs> I can debunk Google. Anyway, cool, man. Sorry. Thanks for watching, guys. Later.